All right, we're going to talk today about PHP, and PHP is um, an example of server-side scripting. And server-side scripting is another set of tools that we can use to help our websites um, be more responsive. Uh, and by more responsive, I mean help them react to whether they are being viewed on a browser or being viewed on a mobile device. So. Um, we've seen techniques already. We've seen some techniques um, using um, CSS and media queries and relative sizes of things. That was something that was very useful. And we're still going to keep doing that. It's not as though um, it's not as though that goes by the wayside. All right. Um, that's still something that is is very important. Um, we're going to add stuff to that, though. At some point, we added jQuery Mobile, which was a, a, a nice way to make our sites look more mobile, mobile-ish, I guess, for lack of a better word. Modern. Modern, yeah. Um, our next step is, and at some point, we're going to look at, at incorporating some JavaScript in there as well. Um, we, I guess we could do that now, but. I chose to start to talk about PHP, so we're going to talk about PHP and the server-side scripting that we can do. Remember our, our famous diagram of the client making a request over the internet getting to a web server and the web server sending a response. And in the case of simple HTML pages, the requests are very straightforward. You ask for a page and the server simply grabs a page and sends it back to you. And the server doesn't really do any processing. The server simply retrieves a page, finds a page and the associated files and sends them back to the client. With server-side scripting, now we can take advantage of all the things we've learned about programming. All right, like for example, if statements and pulling stuff out of databases and all these kinds of things that we've done, and we can make it so that our our response that we send back to the client depends on certain characteristics of the request, in addition to simply the page that they asked for. So, for example. Part of the request are things such as the person's IP address. The IP address can be used to look up and get an approximate location of where that user is located. That's why if you do a Google search for um, shoe stores, you're apt to find shoe stores close to Elyria. That doesn't mean that there are more shoe stores in Elyria than any other part of the world. It means that it knows we are in Elyria. And therefore, if we do a search for shoe stores, it uses our IP address to customize this response. So with server-side scripting, we can customize the response because we can program and we can use stuff that's part of the request. So that was one example, what Google does with making the searches location dependent. It can use that IP address to, to look up in some database somewhere and find out physically where we're located on some approximate level anyhow. There's other stuff that comes over. Form data comes over. So for example, if I do a Google search for shoe store versus hat store, I'm going to get different results. Why? Well, because that Google script can read other parts of the request, the stuff, such as the form data. Now what's relevant for us, and what's going to be most relevant for us right off the bat, is, um, is going to be um, the uh, user agent. This user, user agent comes over 
as part of the request. So information about the platform that the user is on and information about what kind of browser they're using. And all those things come over as part of the request. Well, just like server-side scripting and Google can customize the response given based on location, that is, if we do a search for shoe stores in Elyria, we get a different set than if we did them, uh, the same search in Detroit. All right. We can use that user agent to custom handle the requests that come in from the client. Now, we're going to look at a couple ways that we can do that. The most notable way is that we can actually send them to a different page if they're on a mobile device. So, we can have a little traffic cop on the server side that looks at that request, identifies if it came from a mobile device. If it came from a mobile device, we can send them to a special mobile page. If it didn't, we just keep them on the regular page. So the whole idea of the server-side scripting is that we're making custom responses. We're not simply delivering some HTML page over and over that always stays the same until someone manually goes and changes it. Our server-side script can customize this response. Now, what form is this response in? Well, it's the form that any web page is in. It is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But how that JavaScript and HTML and CSS is written can be customized via the server-side scripting. So let's take a look at a PHP page. Let's build a very, very simple PHP page. And then we'll, we'll expand it and we'll do some different things with it. And eventually, by the time we're done with today, I want to have it so that my page is smart enough to send people to a mobile version of the page as opposed to a full desktop version. Why would we want to do that? Again, if for whatever reason we want our mobile version to be drastically different than the desktop version. By drastically different, I mean not just two columns get put into one column. But we have different navigation scheme, perhaps. We have a lot less stuff on the page, and so on. It comes to a point where it's easier to make two simple pages than one very complicated page that's responsive and can handle both mobile and desktop. So we make a mobile version, we make a desktop version, and then we have a traffic cop that directs the user to their appropriate page. So let's start off looking at a real simple PHP page. Let's build a simple PHP page. All a PHP page is, is an HTML page that contains PHP commands. Remember, not every part of a web page is going to be customized for the user or customized for the request. We do a Google search for one thing, certain parts of the navigation are going to be the same regardless of what page we're on. If we look up one product at Amazon versus another, certain parts of that page are fixed. They don't vary. They're not customized based on the particular user and their request. Same thing with Angel. If you log into Angel and I log into Angel, certain parts of that are um, fixed. It doesn't depend on you know, um, who it is that's logged on. So even a dynamic, which a page that changes based on programming is called a dynamic page, even a dynamic page can have parts of it that are static, that is not changing. So. I'm going to go into, I have a very simple page, and I'm going to rename it actually to index.php. Index 
One thing periodically you'll notice, because the way the permissions are set up, I get warnings when I try to save things here. First of all, let's note that I'm in a specific location. I'm in the folder C INET pub www root. That is my web server's home directory. So if you use WAMP or Examp or any of those other tools, you'll have your own directory. C INET pub www root is typically the home directory for um, Microsoft's IIS, Microsoft's web server. So we can't just double click on pages and open them in the browser like we did with HTML. We could do that with HTML because plain old HTML pages are already browser ready. PHP pages don't have to be processed before the browser consumes them. And how do we process them? Well, we run them through a web server. So that means that we have to have web server software installed on our machine. And even though it didn't go very well last time, Examp or WAMP or whatever are examples of it, and they're, they're pretty easily installed, knock on wood. This one has Microsoft IIS installed, so I'll be using that. But when you request a page, it has to be from a web server. I can't simply just double click it or op and open it up in the browser. All right. Now, this PHP page, I'm going to open it up and Part of this page is going to be plain old HTML. So I'm going to put my plain old HTML5 stuff that would be on every page. Doc type HTML. HTML. Let's imagine that this is a news page. All right, most of this page is just plain old HTML except for lines 9 through 11. So if we were to cut this out temporarily and saved it, that would be just a plain old HTML file. And the web server, when it sees plain old HTML code, doesn't do anything with it. It's already been processed. It's already in a form that's consumable by a browser. So when I talk about the, the server processing it, it means it has to take that code in whatever language it is. It could be PHP, it could be ASP.NET, it could be any number of different things. And it translates it into HTML. So let me go and undo this. And the other thing that we can have in PHP besides our basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is we can have PHP commands. PHP commands are separated from the HTML by this little declaration and this little ending declaration. This means 
that we are in PHP land, if you will. That anything between here and here is not HTML. It is PHP. And therefore, the browser is not going to, I'm sorry, the web server is not simply going to send those characters to the browser. The web server is going to process them, create HTML from them, and send that HTML to the server. So, for example, I have H1, top news stories 4, and then I go into PHP mode and I say print date with a whole bunch of stuff in between the, the uh, quotation marks. What is that really doing? Print says send to the browser. Sometimes you'll see echo use instead. Both of those work about the same way. So if I say print, that means send to the browser. What is date? Well, date's a PHP function that I can use to pull the current date. And what is that stuff between the um, quotation marks? That's a particular format of the date. And if you did a Google for a PHP date function, it would show you all the possible things that you could do. So now, I'm going to go and run this. Now, I can't go and simply open this up in the browser like I could in CISS 216. So I couldn't go and drag that into the browser. It doesn't work. Top news stories 4. All right. If you see the words file up here, it means you did not open the file correctly. You did not open the page correctly. You can't directly open the page in the browser. You have to run it through the web server. Because remember, PHP scripts are not immediately consumable by the browser. There's some processing that has to take place first. So, how do I access this file on my server? Well, there's a special name that's given to my web server that I am running. And that special name is localhost. There's also a special IP address given to it, which is 127.0.0.1. So if I type in either localhost and the name of the file I want, or 127.0.0.1 slash and the name of the file I want, the browser will ask my local web server for this page and the server will process the PHP page and deliver it back. Now that's the same regardless of the kind of web server you have. In my particular situation and in the labs here, the code needs to be put into CEI Netpub WW root. That's the web server's root directory. That's where it's looking for the files. If you install XAMPP or whatever, XAMPP or whatever, it has to be in a place that you have installed it to be. So if I go and request this page now, I can go and say localhost slash index dot php. Thanks. Localhost. And there I see top news stories for Monday, 22nd of September, 2004, 540 and 45 seconds. Now, watch as I refresh this. It updates the time. Why? Because it's generating that script, that, that HTML page, every time that someone requests it. So every time someone requests it, the web server when it hits this line of code, evaluates the time, and outputs it, sends it to the browser in this format. Now here's an interesting thing. This is a web, this is a time on the web server, 
not the time on the client. All right? So, for example, you know, here it's kind of tough because we're on a client and the server's the same machine. All right? But if we were connected to another web server and that other web server was in the United Kingdom, for example, it would show like 10.41 p.m. as a time because it would use a time that was local to the web server. All right? That code runs on the server and sends code, HTML code to the browser. If I do and look at view source here, I'm not seeing the PHP code. I am seeing the results of the PHP code. I am seeing what the server prepared and how it used the PHP script to customize the response back to the user to display the current time. Yes? How would you get the time of the client instead of uh, the server say if you weren't in a different country? How would you get the time of the client? Um, that's a good question. You could do it a couple different ways and depending on how, depending on exactly what you want to do with it. One way you could do it is if you wrote the code in JavaScript. JavaScript, remember, runs on the client's machine. So if you ask for the time in JavaScript, it would give me the time on the client's machine. The other thing that you could do is, I believe, one of the things that comes with the part of the request is the time zone that they're in, the time zone that the request comes from. And you could go and do some calculation. So like if my server is in the UK, I could read and find out, okay, this is the United States Eastern Standard Time. Okay, they're five hours behind me. Go and take and subtract five from my time to do it. So you could do a little bit of math if you want to do that. I've been talking a lot about the request that you get. Let's look and let's Google. And let's see all the things that we can tell between get and post. Yeah. The difference between get and post is where the data gets passed. If you use get, the data gets passed right on the query string. If you use post, the data gets passed sort of internal to the request. So you can't see it. So it won't show up in the URL. Yeah. All right, here's, here's what I think I want to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to put here, not really a news story, but we'll pretend it is. Here's a snippet of code that shows me everything that the PHP server is getting when we place a request. Um, 
chin. Try this. I know this should work. Not gotten wood. All right, here we go. Now, I, somewhere on here it might be the request. It does tell me the date and the time zone that, that this is based on. It does tell me some other parameters. I'm looking somewhere on here there might be the request parameters I was looking for before. Was reflection, but I don't see request. Here's some server files or server variables. Wait, go back up. At the bottom of that one it says request time and all that. Okay, so it looks like there is some parameters for this. And if we look through this, we might be able to find um another one request URL. Request URL, okay. Fair enough. Point is, is that there's a lot of parameters that we can do stuff with. All right? And notice how this, we view the HTML, it's a whole mess of HTML. Whereas the PHP that generated it is very small. So this translates into HTML. All right. What I'm going to do now is we're, we, I want to move in the direction of doing some user agent detection. All right? So, detect mobile browser. We looked at this before. And I'm going to copy this PHP. Actually, I was, I was mistaken when I said request. It was those server variables, now that I think about it. Because request would just be the form variables that came. The server variables would have, would have the ones that I was talking about. So if we look back at that listing, these are the variables that we would be speaking of. Are we still going to go over the website in my slides? Yes. We're, we're just, we're nudging in that direction. Okay, I was just curious. No, that, that's 
Fair enough. I'm going to grab this line of code that grabs a user agent. And I'm going to pop it in here. Now, what is the user agent? The user agent is who is making the request. So, oops. Variables in PHP start with a dollar sign. Okay, that's one thing that's a little odd about that. If you see something without a dollar sign, it's not a variable. It's a function. So, for example, here, this is a print function. This is a date function. All right. So, what I want to do now is I want to print that variable. So, I can say print dollar sign user dollar sign user agent. Now, thing is, is you don't declare variables in PHP. You just start using them. It's kind of goofy. And in that respect, PHP is not as evolved of a language, I guess, as C Sharp and other ones. And that can actually cause some potential problems but you just start using them. So, I'm going to save this, and this is going to have two little snippets of dynamic code. It's going to have this snippet that's going to display my user agent, and it's going to have this snippet which displays the current date and time. So, I go here. All right, it knows that I am running a Mozilla-based browser, blah, 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 I'm running Chrome. All right. Let's go and run this uh, from Internet Explorer. Instantly, interestingly, it still says it's Mozilla based. Let's run this from Firefox. So we're on Firefox. Let's run this from our Opera Mobile. version of Opera Mobile. So, that little snippet of PHP code knows the kind of browser we're running. We can use that to our advantage now. All right? In fact, some of you, if you've gone to ever download a program, it can do user agent detection to tell if you're on a Mac or a PC. So it sends you to the right download page if there's a different page for those. So you can use user agent detection for all sorts of things. And this is just one of them. So now we have user agent detection that is looking at the browser and it's just simply displaying a message. Well, that's all well and good, but we actually want to do something with that. And herein is where we come to the redirect, all right? Because I'm going to change this index up a little bit. And I'm going to say full version home page.
And I'm simply going to put a paragraph saying this is the full version of the site. meant for computers and not mobile devices. Alright. I'm going to save that. I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to call it mobile index.php. Let me go and edit that guy. put it on the desktop. I wasn't paying attention, so let me move it over into the folder where I want to put it. Just cut it. Yeah. Just cut. And go into CI Netpub, WW root, right mouse, paste it. It's going to complain because um, I'm not administrator, so I'll say continue, and it will copy it over. All right. So let me go and edit this guy. And I'm going to change this to say mobile version. Maybe. Change the wording. So now I have two pages. I have index.php that says full version home page. This is a full version of the site meant for computers and not mobile devices. I also have mobile. Dash index.php that says this is a mobile version of the site. All right. And right now it's just a shell of a page, right? I don't have really anything meaningful there. I just have uh, placeholders right now. What I need is the traffic cap, all right? And I could do this any number of ways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put code in the full version of the site that's going to look to see if they're in a mobile device. And if they're in the mobile device, um, it will switch them to the mobile version. So... We could do an include file. We'll, we'll come to that in, in a bit. I'm going to go and I'm going to put this code here, copy it here, and I'm going to put it at the start of my desktop page. very start. Now this is PHP code, so I got to go into PHP land. Alright. Now, how does this work? Well, we looked at this last time. There's a gigantic if statement. And if this if statement is true, it means I am on a mobile device. It's looking at the user agent, and it's comparing the user agent with all these different things. And if it matches one of the devices that's known to be a mobile device, it's going to send the user someplace else. Well, in our case, where do we want to send them? We're going to send them to mobileindex.php. 
So whatever the name of our mobile homepage is, and we said in our case it's mobile-index.php. So we come into this. This if statement is either true or false. If the if statement is true, that means that they're on a mobile device, we rewrite the header. What does that mean? We essentially change the request and we push them to the mobile version of the, of the, of the page. If that if statement is false, then we're not on a mobile device. We're on a desktop device, in which case we don't have to do anything. We just proceed merrily on our way. All right. So let's save everything. And let's go here. And I go in and I'm on a desktop browser. And I type in localhost index.php. It takes me to the full version of the site, right? Why did it do that? Well, this if statement, code I just copied from the Detect Mobile Browser site, this if statement is false. I'm not on a mobile device. Therefore, I do not redirect the user to mobileindex.php. Now, if I open up Opera Mobile, And I put that in and go. Ooh, I am on the full version of the site, interestingly enough. Let me try another device. also on the full version of the site. Is it because it saved it from cache? That's what I'm wondering. Maybe if you do a DNS flash. Uh, possibly I'm going to go here and settings and Still telling me the mobile.
Could you repeat that, please? Mm -hmm. You cut it out of line 16. Yeah. yeah, I did. All right, before... I didn't copy the whole script. I just copied that if statement. I didn't copy that part. So that's what I'm missing. So now I'm confident it will work. I'm going to send it to will be mobile index.php. So yeah, I neglected to copy the entire script. So let's go and save this. And localhost, that part works. Let's go and open up the Opera Mobile browser. And it says we're on the mobile version page. Okay, lesson there, be sure you copy the whole script and not just part of it. I was wondering why I wasn't saying anything for the, the, the then I realized, okay, I didn't set that variable because I didn't copy the whole, um, the whole um, page. Now to your point, I should put in that viewport um, command for it. So let me copy that meta tag. I have a question. Mm -hmm. No, it would still show the full because it would know, it would still know that I'm on a Chrome browser, even though the screen is small. But they have Chrome browsers for mobile devices. But they're mobile Chrome as opposed to Windows Chrome. Or they're Android Chrome as opposed to Windows Chrome or Mac Chrome or iOS Chrome, okay. if there is such a thing. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's... The user agent is more than just the browser, it's the browser on the specific platform it's on. So let me go and put that in the mobile version so it looks better. And that's the full version? And that's the full version. <laughs> Put it in this one instead. And we go and view this, and there we see um, a better version. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward to do this. So, for example, if you wanted to have 
um, two versions of the site. You simply make two HTML pages, and you are, are the um, PHP pages actually, um, and you put that snippet of code that you get from Detect Mobile browsers at the top of one that looks at it and says, "Hey, if they're on a mobile browser, send them to this page instead." Okay, send them to that page instead. Yes. So now that we're starting PHP, do you still want us to style with jQuery? Well, what you could do, what 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 I would do is. I could take this second page, the mobile version, and style it using jQuery Mobile. Okay. All right. I wouldn't have to do that to the full version. The full version, I would use all my web development skills to give a nice two-column layout or whatever. And then I might use jQuery Mobile to style the mobile version of it. Okay. So that would sort of be a good formula to take with that. I no, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, we can, in fact, we can go and we can put jQuery Mobile in the mobile version. I don't know exactly how it would look because our page is pretty small, but it doesn't look different at all. Um, what would be one of the data roles that I could put here? Data role equals header. I could say data role equals header. Let's do data position fixed. Data theme of B, you said? Mm -hmm. oh, I put it in the wrong, I put it in the desktop version again. version. Oh boy. So it, it now has the jQuery mobile look. Why does it cut off the header like that? Just because of what we have the scaling 
Yeah. Um, we could look at and, and possibly change that, but it allows that much space for that. And, and if it isn't, if it's bigger than that, it cuts it off. Yeah. All right, so if you put the code in the right place, and if you remember to copy the script completely, this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. All right. So now you can build these to your heart's content. And you can go in and everything we learned about mobile, we can put in here. We can also use the responsive techniques on any of these. Because we said mobile, but really, there's a big difference in mobile devices between a flip phone and a iPad, for example. So we could actually put in um, queries and things like that so that um, uh, um, media queries and, and all that so that certain things apply in some situations. Remember, these are all tools in your toolbox that you can piece together. So just because we've learned this doesn't mean that you discard jQuery mobile or you discard the responsive techniques that we learned or whatever. All right. One more thing I want to talk about before we finish today and that is an include file because Anytime you have a situation where you have possibly duplicated stuff, that means kind of twice the work, possibly. Now that we have two pages to do, that's two pages that we maintain. I would like to be clever and make it so it isn't double the work. Maybe it's 1.5 times the work or 1.6 times the work. And if I'm clever, I can maybe not get it to where it's as easy as maintaining one, but I can make it easier than maintaining two pages, two separate pages. I can make it a little bit easier. And one of the big ways I can do that is with include files. Now, what are include files? Include files are external files that you can put a chunk of any kind of code that you would put in a PHP file. What kind of code could be in a PHP file? You could put um, HTML code. You could put JavaScript code. You could put um, CSS code. You could put PHP code. So I could put any code I want to in an include file, and it then acts like an external CSS file, where I can share that file between many pages. So what happens when I have an include file is the web server essentially pastes in the contents of that contents of that file wherever I put the include. For example, let's say that regardless of the of the um, regardless of the uh, mobile or desktop version, I would have the same footer on both pages. All right. So what I could do is this. I could go in and I could create a new file. And I'm going to put the HTML footer tag. And I could say copyright. And Zellers 2014 or whatever I want to put in there. All right. I could then save that as an include file. I can give it a name. see that as an option in this, but I'm just going to go and say all types, and I'm going to call it footer.inc, and I can save it in there. 
it doesn't want want it to doesn't want me to put it in there, so I'll save it to documents. Then I'll copy it over from documents to Now what I can do when I want to include this, I can go if I can type, I can go into Yeah, it's doing this stupid IntelliSense. It's like stupid autocorrect uh, on your phone. And I can say include, and I can specify the name of the file. Alright. Now I can do the same thing on the full version. So now I go and refresh that. It appears on the both versions. In both versions, the code comes from the same place. So if I decide, gee, I want to spell out my name completely, I, can, I don't have to go into each file individually. I can simply go into the footer include file and change it in one place and everyone gets that change. So this is what you can do to share content between two different pages. All right. Um, again, it's a notion of separating things out, breaking them down into little chunks and little components and then you can reuse that chunk or component in several different places. So in this case, we can put a chunk of HTML in an include file, and in that way, we don't have to, uh, excuse me, we don't have to go in and, and write that on every page. We can simply include that include file. So this is, this is sort of the bare bones example of this. Uh, we're going to build on this and show a more realistic example um, in subsequent classes. But what are the key points to remember? The key points to remember is that we're going to be using PHP, which is a server-side scripting language. That means we can't open the pages directly in the browser. We have to ask a web server for them. And we have to ask for a web server that has PHP installed on it. The web server will take our PHP code and it will look at the code as being in two, one of two kinds. Either it's inside a PHP declaration or it's not. If it's not inside the PHP declaration, like for example here, it's just plain old HTML and it gets sent to the browser just like any code would, any HTML code would. The code that exists within the PHP declaration, however, the server goes and does its thing with that. And what, what's its thing? Well, it depends what's in the PHP script. In this case, with an include file, it simply brings in the contents of the file and puts them in that location. In the case of the mobile detection, it looks at the user agent and either sends them to another page or keeps them on this page. So, as far as PHP goes, as of now, you really don't need to know how to do anything except copy that script from Detect Mobile Browsers, change it so that it redirects to your mobile page, and then learn how to use include files. All right. The other thing that you're going to have to do, though, is make sure that this code is installed on a web server and running on a web server so that the PHP can be processed and create HTML. 
All right, questions about this. Next time we'll do a more full-blown example and we'll look at how we could even put code in there to do different stuff depending on the, whether it was an Android or iPhone, whatever. We'll play around with the user agent and do some additional things. All right. Um, let me go and save the file. Who is going to lab? Okay. Make sure I'm headed in the right direction. Okay.